comet sheds like a buffalo. It's unreal. No, he does not have mange. He's just part bison. In our bag, I'm useless But not for long, the future is coming on I ain't happy, feeling glad I got sunshine In our bag, I'm useless Not for long, the future is coming on It's coming on, it's coming on It's coming on, it's coming on It's coming on, it's coming on, yeah Ha ha Finally, someone that of my cage. Now it's time for me, it's not because I'm counting no age. Now you shouldn't be there, now I shouldn't be scared. Now I'm gonna repair, and I'm gonna get set. It's tangible, I bet you didn't think so. I command you to defend the ram and give a look, don't make it all manageable. Pick and choose, it and lose all your different crews. Chicks and dudes, What's so you think it's really handsome. Handsome. Yes, it's you. So it's a couple weeks later, I've only had to use that sleek, easy for just a few times and you can see how much sleeker he looks. He looks great. Um, he's gotten most of that winter coat off. He's really getting a shine to him. I have not bathed him this year yet so this is all his own natural coat shine. As you can see he still has a few little tufts he has to lose but I'll just let him lose that on his own. And then I don't know what all Comet is. I was told he was an appendix, but he obviously has some sort of woolly mammoth or maybe even pony in him or something, but he gets pretty feathery. I'm actually gonna let him keep those feathers until they fall off on their own, which they will. We have a lot of flies that come out pretty early on, and I think that kind of helps protect them from the flies a little bit. And we don't get really muddy weather here. Um, we live pretty much on a giant hill, but if we had really muddy weather, I would probably clip those so he didn't get scratches. So our next task is to trim this long westerning mane we got going on. I let him grow it out in the winter to kind of help keep his neck warm. And then in the summer, I like to trim it because he will sweat under it. Otherwise, I would just leave it alone to help him with the flies. But he does sweat really hard underneath this because it does get really hot here. Comet is not a show pony, so he doesn't have to have it trimmed all year long. So I just trimmed Comet's bridal path. Lee, can you let me show? Um, instead of getting the clippers out, he's got a super thin mane as you can see. It's like barely my pinky wide. So instead of pulling the clippers out and all that, I just trim it with scissors and just try to get it as close to his neck as I possibly can. And there you have it. The finished product. Yay! Ta-da! Um, I'm not going to bang Comet's tail because his tail is pretty wimpy anyway and I want him to have as much of it as possible to swat the flies. He's not a show pony anymore. Um, and then the last thing I do, which I will spare you guys the details, is I clean their sheaths in the springtime. But I'll show you what I use to clean it. Oh, you're so handsome, pretty boy. Oh, and another thing, I know his ears are like woolly mammoth ears. But again, we have so many flies and gnats around here, I leave them alone. And they look kind of raunchy because I put this ointment in them to help prevent the gnats from getting in there because he gets sweet itch pretty bad. So instead of using all that Excalibur sheath cleaner and soap and water and all that jazz, I just use baby oil. Plain old baby oil as a lubricant to get up in there and just clean it by hand. So you want to wear gloves because it stinks. I don't know why it stinks so bad. But you always want to be careful with the horse because some horses actually don't mind it like Buck, but Comet hates it. He hates for you to touch his man parts. So, I always try to use my right hand because I'm right handed and I keep one hand up here on his rump so I can feel him tense up. He's actually kicked a vet in the knee trying to clean a sheath before. So I'm always really careful and I talk to him the whole way and I just kind of feel around the sheath before I stick a hand up in there. But he's the kind of horse that you can't ever get him to pull his sheath out so you really got to get your hand up in there to get to the bean. But I just keep a hand up here. And I can actually feel his hind end tense up with the hand up here 
before he acts like he's going to kick. So if I feel I'm tense up, I just kind of pull back out, talk to him, give him some rubs, and just try again. And if I just do it gently, then he's okay with it. But I'm going to spare you the details because I don't want this to turn into some raunchy video that non-equestrians don't understand. Um, but if you do need like a tutorial on how to clean your horse's sheath, I would ask your vet because it's really important to get to the bean and pull the bean out and sometimes it's really really hard to get to the bean. So you have to know where it is and how to get to it. But anyway, I just use baby oil and funny story, speaking of raunchy stuff, is a friend of mine also uses baby oil to clean her horse's sheath and her boyfriend did not know that you had to do this. Um, so it was like their anniversary or her birthday or something like that and she was at the barn and in the stall with baby oil cleaning her horse's sheath and her boyfriend came with roses and chocolates to surprise her at the barn and walked in on her doing that. So that was a funny explanation. Anyway, let's get on to the next guys, bit of so spring the next cleaning for the day. lovely fun task we have to do is to wash all the blankets we used over the winter time. And then I also have like 20 saddle pads that need to be washed as well. And I am not lucky enough to have a washing machine dedicated to just horse clothing. And I'm not about to ruin my washer at home, so I'll show you how I wash my stuff without having a washing machine. Um, but the stuff that I use to clean all that jazz is, um, I use just dish soap for the saddle pads, and I use this ivory, it doesn't have any perfume or dyes in it, so for sensitive horses that's good to use. And it really gets that greasy, cruddy stuff out from underneath their saddle pads. I have got two waterproof sheets, two waterproof blankets, and then two coolers I also need to wash. And you can't just use regular detergent on the waterproof stuff because it'll strip the waterproof layer off. So instead of using the more expensive um, brands that are dedicated for horse sheets and blankets, I use all detergent, all free and clear. It has no perfumes or dyes as well, and it's gentle enough that it won't ruin your waterproof layer. Um, you can also use wool light, but it's more expensive and you don't get as much in a bottle as that all free and clear. And then after I clean it, I spray it with this. It's Granger's Repel. It helps um, maintain the waterproof layer. So you have to spray this on when it's clean and still damp. And then it recommends to put it in the dryer to help it set. But I don't want to put this stuff in the dryer. Like I said before, I don't want a bunch of hair in my dryer. So. I just spray it on and let it sit out in the sun and the heat from the sun kind of helps it set better. So this kind of just helps maintain your waterproofing layer and I've done this all my life and I've had sheets and blankets that have lasted me 10 years sometimes. So highly recommend washing it this way. All right, so I've got a wheelbarrow that I'm filling up with water that I've put all my colored saddle pads in. And I do my whites separate because I don't want my whites to turn pink from my red saddle pads. So I'm just filling this up with water. So I'm going to spray a pretty liberal amount of this dish soap in there. And spray it on top, let it foam up. So I'm going to let that fill up some more and let it soak for a minute in the soapy water. And then I dump it out and I hang it up on these panels. And I'll take a brush, uh, scrub all the gunk from the inside out, and then spray it. Feeling glad I got sunshine in a bag I'm useless. But not for long, the future is coming on. So I ain't happy. For your white saddle pads, I'm going to show you how to get those pesky brown spots out. I made up some more clean water in my wheelbarrow and I've just got a regular stiff brush and it just takes elbow grease. On, it's coming on, it's coming on, it's coming on. will work to get this black off for my dressage saddle. You just put some extra soap on your brush and scrub. I'll show you the before. 
And then there's the after. I got mostly all of the black off and it just took a few seconds of scrubbing. All right, then rinse and repeat for your blankets as well. I spared you all the details of watching me do the same thing to the blankets. Cleaned out my wheelbarrow. I cleaned out my brush bin and all the saddle pads are done and drying. So cleaned all my brushes, cleaned out all the junk, got to put it back in there. I have the little Kensington grooming tote. So I washed that inside and out and just letting that dry. So while the blankets are still damp and in the sun, I'm going to spray them with this repel. And you just want to do a nice even mist. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me spring clean for the day. I hope you guys are having lovely spring weather like we are. Uh, comment down below. Let me know what you guys are planning to do for your spring cleaning session or if you have any tips or tricks. And please like, please subscribe, please share all the little youtube -y things that help me out grow as a channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, bye! Guys, this is it. The mecca of all fly control. Spalding fly predators. I was really skeptical at first. But it is unbelievable. My farm is crawling with giant horse flies and gnats and all kinds of nasty flies. And I started using this about halfway through the summer last year. And pretty much within a month, you could notice a big difference. So it's these little um, fly predators and they eat the larvae in the poop. Um, the problem is if you have a ton of horses, you need to buy quite a few but I only have two horses and a donkey and some goats and then my neighbors have some horses so I can do it pretty manageably so if you have a small farm I highly recommend it if you have a larger farm you have to get a bigger quantity but definitely definitely look into this it makes a massive difference um, if you have a mm. it doesn't have any per